Every year, the supply of great options for the middle-class car enthusiast gets smaller and smaller. There's dozens of choices for millionaires to buy their next six-figure, stupid-fast supercar, and even more options than ever for billionaires to buy million-plus-dollar hypercars, but the supply of fun, engaging, and affordable cars is shrinking rapidly. This hurts you, the enthusiast, and us, the the content creator to whom you enthusiasts turn when it's time to get a new sports car. That's why this video is so important. Zach and I are going to compare two fast, engaging, reasonably affordable manual transmission sports cars. Zach has chosen the all new Honda Civic Type R. It's the most powerful Honda sedan in history. It's got a motorsports developed chassis, a huge wing, and a very red interior. Whereas I have chosen the Toyota Supra, which finally comes with a stick shift. It's got a slick turbocharged six cylinder engine, standout styling, and a traditional sporting front engine rear wheel drive layout. Zach and I are gonna judge these two cars based on these five categories after taking a spirited Canyon drive. And then we're gonna go back to the studio, fight about it a bit and declare a winner. So what makes a good sports car and why have I chosen the correct one? Allow me to explain. To me, there are good enthusiast cars of which there are many, and then there are great ones. And the great ones have a couple of key attributes. To me, they're rear drive with a manual transmission, and that is non-negotiable. The new Supra, finally is. If you're gonna have an enthusiast car, it should probably be fast, shouldn't it? And this thing is a screamer. If you're gonna have a good enthusiast car, it should probably be pretty quick. BMW says that this three liter turbo engine makes 382 horsepower in the Supra. Based on what I'm feeling, I'm guessing that's a low ball. My butt dyno says this probably makes 382 at the tires. This car goes. A really good enthusiast car shouldn't just be daily transportation. It should be purposeful, beautiful, stylish, aggressive, represent its heritage. And the Supra actually does that pretty well, despite its BMW engine. What defines an enthusiast's car? Well, I think it pulls an emotion out of us. We buy it based on some rational grounds and, and, and ideas, but also some irrational ones, some of that je ne sais quoi, something that is, it's an emotional purchase, right? It makes us feel a certain way. It doesn't matter if it's a Jeep, SUV, pickup truck, or sports car, or sedan. This car might be a four-door that can be confused for an Uber, but it has big performance chops. First, braking. 70 to zero in 153 feet. <laughs> that is amazing. That is quick. 153 is pretty good. But this does it in 150. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by Factor. I love Factor because it solves a real problem I have in my life, forgetting to eat. I know, you look at me and you don't go, that's a guy who forgets to eat. But let me tell you something, eating regularly throughout the day at the start of hunger is important. It's one of those things I know, but I'm not very good at living by. With Factor, it's great. I come off the mountain, I come back from a shoot, just like I'm doing right now, and the Factor food is here, it's in the fridge, it's ready, it's never frozen. I throw it in the microwave real quick, two minutes, and I've got a healthy, nutritious meal. That way, I'm not skipping meals, I'm not waiting till I'm totally starving, and then I just get 
the first thing that's available, which is usually not something healthy, right? These smoothies really help keep me going in between those meals. They're vegan, they're uh, gluten-free, all natural ingredients, very delicious, very tasty. And Factor's got great options like this, taco chicken, queso, and rice. They've got a Greek chicken dish. Zach is about to eat a honey mustard chicken dish for lunch. They've got over 35 options to choose from. Each week, the box shows up. It's ready to go. You throw it in the fridge, and then you have it where you're hungry. No matter what your dietary restriction is, vegan, low calorie, keto, Factor has a menu option for you. It's cheaper, quicker, and healthier than going out to lunch, and it's way less annoying and way less wasteful than cooking for yourself every time you want to make a meal. I love Factor, and you guys will like it too. Head down to factor75.com or click the link in the video description and use code TST60, that's TST60, to get 60% off your first Factor box. And thanks to Factor for sponsoring today's video. The number of pedals isn't the only thing they've changed. They've also recalibrated the suspension, the steering, and a whole bunch of stuff to make the Supra better over those undulating roads and more predictable to drive at the limit. Plus, with a 19-inch wheel and a meaty sidewall, it's much, much better than the Civic Type R on these uneven canyon roads. Civic Type R is perfect on a very smooth racetrack. But when the road gets bumpy, the grip gets uneven, and you get tossed around all over the place. One thing that makes the Supra a better enthusiast car is that it's actually more compliant on uneven roads, creating a better contact patch, and therefore holding better grip when the surface isn't perfect. Woo! So, the Civic Type R is a little on the stiff side. Driving it around town, um, I did about 700 miles in it on the highway. It's a little stiff. All of that amazing engineering work they did with the suspension. And we go into more detail on our other Civic Type R video. You can watch that in this link. All of that amazing work does make the ride a little bit stiff, but you're not gonna be setting Nürburgring records in a car <laughs> that is too soft. Although I didn't like the automatic Supra very much in the context of Road & Track's Performance Car of the Year, that was sort of a best of the best test. Now out here, by itself, this car is actually quite good and does a lot of things right. The inputs are very good. This driving position is very good. It's very, very fast. This thing has 18 horsepower less than the Nissan Z on paper, but I'm convinced it would absolutely smoke it in a drag race. It just feels so much quicker. Speaking of quick, the last Civic Type R, the FK8, ran a Nürburgring time of 7.43. This one has not ran a Nürburgring time yet, but it did beat that car's record at Suzuka Circuit. This has the front wheel drive record now. The Supra has not had an official time, although one of the lead engineers said it could run a 740, but that was when it still had an automatic. So when you factor in the manual shifting of that one, they might be dead even. So even with 70 more horsepower than this one, they're still arriving at the finish line at the exact same time, hypothetically. The biggest story with this Supra is, of course, the manual transmission, finally. And I don't know what ZF have done to their shifter here, but this is a better shifter than has ever been installed in any BMW. The little changes they've made have added up to a lot. It somehow accentuates the torque curve more than the automatic does, and in a way that can't really be measured uh, with data. 6 speed in the Supra does feel good. I will say that. It is the best BMW shifter I have driven in many, many years. In terms of feel, accuracy, 
and that kind of mechanical sensation. But this is better. The Civic Type R is one of the best manual shifters on the market today. Shifter feel is one thing, but speed wins races. While that Honda may be really the pinnacle of engineering, we know this motor is about three parts in a tune away from running tens. Yes, Matt, we're all very impressed by your Toyota's horsepower, or your BMW's horsepower, as it were. Because that's the thing. Both these cars are quick, they're both exciting to drive, but I think one of the tiebreakers will be uniqueness. This car has an engine that is unique to this car and this car only. The B58 in his Toyota is also in a number of crossover sedans and other coupes that are offered by BMW. Yes, the combination of that manual transmission and that engine is unique to the Supra, at least in the United States. But you can get that feeling, you can get that acceleration and that sound from a number of other cars from BMW. But this car, the Civic Type R, with this 315 horsepower uh, two liter that screams to 7,000 RPM. You will not find this sound, this experience, or this power in any other Honda product that's out there. Sure, he has more numbers, but like OJ's defense attorney said, if we ignore the evidence, we can win. And I'm able to shift right now with my coffee cup right in the cup holder because I don't have a drive shaft running to the back. They've made these cup holders sit really low. Unlike Matt, who has put his coffee cup in my door card. Fine, but Ken Block didn't get 100 million views on YouTube showing off his cup holders. Doug DeMuro, on the other hand, did. Front wheel drive is good for an everyday car. But with a front wheel drive car, you can't really do this. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I I can't do that. I could do a front wheel drive burn. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. You can tell that the GR team is taking this car seriously because the spacing of the pedals are aces. And where sacrifices have been made, they've not been made in the dynamics department, they've been made in the other stuff department. When you're building an enthusiast car that has to be a livable daily, you should always prioritize the drive over the daily. That's a good enthusiast car. For instance, the multimedia knob has been moved out of the way. It's a little harder to read what each button does, but the shifter had to go here, and better the shifter is in the right place than put somewhere else. Same with the cup holders. They're clearly not meant for something to be moving your hand back and forth, but moving your hand back and forth is more important, and so screw your beverages. There are some negatives. This engine doesn't sound like much to me, inside or outside the car. That's just the nature of the beast with turbos these days and small displacement engines. And honestly, it's not just the engine in this car that I think is kind of tapped out. I actually don't know what you'd customize in this thing. The, the handling's great, the suspension, you could soften, but it would be slower around the corners. The knuckles, all the geometry, everything was done really well. You know, you, you put some wheels on it, it's kind of it. So that is a point against. While I was feeling a little cynical about my car's potential, Matt was turning lemons into lemonade. They have also recalibrated a bunch of things to optimize for the manual gearbox. The rear end is shorter. It's now a 346, which negatively affects your fuel economy, but improves the performance. It's only two tenths of a second slower than the auto to 60 and in the quarter, right? That's not much considering you're shifting yourself. Negatively impacting your fuel economy for the sake of performance, that is enthusiastic and I like it. Like Zach's car, my car also had some imperfections. It is practical enough to use as a daily driver if you're the right size. But this low side curtain here, it's very Viper, very Huracan, and it means you have to duck to see out the sides and duck to get in and out of it. The trunk is pretty small. The hood 
has a long schnoz on it. And so those elements make it a little suboptimal for everyday use unless you are small. It shouldn't be too big. If it's too big, it's not a sports car. Plus, this thing has a rip-snorting motor in a very svelte chassis. 3,300 and change for a car in 2022 is quite light. Enthusiast cars do require a bit of compromise. We all know that. The Miata is the perfect example of that. But if you can minimize the amount of compromises you make while still having this kind of speed and fun, isn't that the better car? No one is going to say that the 911 isn't compromised, but it's one of the best do-everything sports cars that's out there. And I don't think you'd call that a boring car. That's an enthusiast car, is it not? Woo! So yeah, you could drift it. You could do a burnout in it. But you're not going to do it that often. You know what you're going to do a lot of? Carry friends around bring things places you know take your partner and his or her friends for a ride <laughs> an exciting ride up to somewhere like good vibes or a car meet and in that car you can only bring one person it goes like hell it rides really well the inputs are great it looks good it stands out in a crowd and even though it shares an engine with some BMWs once you look past that, you realize what you're getting and how good for the mid $50,000 range it actually is. These categories are not an order of importance, by Correct. the way. They are just categories. So the inputs, the Civic is kind of the gold standard here, isn't it? It is. I, the Supra has a great shifter. I was very impressed, better than most BMWs, but the Civic is still probably the best one on the market right now. Yeah, I think south of a Porsche GT3, the Civic Type R does have the best shifter on the market. I have no complaints about the pedals, and the steering wheel shape and size is also excellent. Points to Toyota, whatever they've done with that shifter that is different than what BMW yeah. does with that shifter works. Yes, well it's done. It's good. The shifter, although the knob is a little tiny knob. It it's is. a little tiny knob. And it's the placement, I felt like, was just a, a few inches like too far back. It wasn't perfectly placed, but it was very good given what the constraints they had. Right. They had to start with a car that probably wasn't meant to be stick and make it stick. So they had to move some stuff around to some maybe suboptimal positions. I think they did well, but I think Honda has done better. I agree. So one point for the Honda. Now, road feel. Now, you have more experience driving both of these than I do, but I will say that the Civic... I feel like it communicates really well to my hands and my butt through the seat, how much grip there is at all four tires, how much uh, how much grip is coming when I'm accelerating. Like it really talks to you and I feel really confident going quickly in that car. I mean, I agree. It does talk to you a lot, but I also think you sometimes feel too much. The car does <laughs> get banged around a bit, even though they've gone with a smaller wheel and tire than the previous generation, which has helped. You can still like kind of jump that car sometimes. True. It's easy to lose your contact patch if there's a big whoop or a change in a uh, road camber you can get some torque steer. So I think the Supra has better road feel than the Civic Type R, all things considered. All right. Now, style. The Civic Type R looks great. It's a very good looking Civic. It's a vast improvement from uh, the previous generation one. It's yes. more mature. Uh, it looks great from all the angles. But However, constrained by the fact that you are starting with a Civic. The bigger issue with style is that I literally almost walked up to a white Honda Accord last night thinking it was my car. That really, <laughs> really, really happened. Right. You will never have that problem in the Supra because it only looks like a Supra. People might not know it's a manual Supra, but they're still going to know that's a Supra. Right. And I have said negative things about the Supra in the past, but I do actually like the style. I think it is proudly Japanese. I think it doesn't look like anything else on the road. Compared to the Civic Type good. R... I think it has a little more style. I have to agree. Yeah. Now, character. Character is different from style. I openly don't like uh, platform and uh, uh, powertrain shared cars, especially right. sports cars. And the thing with, of course, the Supra is that that engine, the B58, is used in crossovers, sedans, the Supra, other coupes. 
So to me, you can get that acceleration experience. Like you could close your eyes driving the Supra and feel like you're in a lot of other cars. Right. It's not so much that you could get the Supra's engine in other cars. It's that you can get the Supra's engine in other cars made by BMW, right. not made by Toyota. It's not just crossovers. <laughs> it's X3s and X4s Yeah, from it's BMW, BMW crossovers. Yeah. The fact that if you can open the hood in the Supra and there is a Toyota badge not eight inches from a BMW badge, you have to look pretty hard and you have to ignore a whole lot to feel like you're in an authentic Toyota. Yes. Purity of bloodline is not there. Mm -hmm. This is a BMW in a Supra hat. Yes. Uh, Civic so wins. Civic wins that. Now, speed. The Civic Type R is, I think, the fastest front wheel drive car on sale right now. The last one set the Nürburgring record for a front-wheel drive production car, which was then beaten by a Magan. Yeah. But this new one is faster than that Magan at Suzuka. They haven't ran it at the Nürburgring yet, but it seems like it probably for a short amount of time, be. this will be the fastest front-wheel drive production car around road courses on sale today. This is a track-ready and fast car, mm -hmm. but it ain't as fast as the Supra. Well, this is interesting. Quarter mile, zero to 60, the Supra wins. But... When the Supra came out, the head chassis engineer said that the Supra would probably run a 740 at the Nürburgring. They never did an official run, but the last gen Civic Type R ran a 743. So are we, I mean, this is hypothesizing. I, I, I hypothesizing, but. If, but what, what is our measurement of speed? On a road, especially an imperfect one, mm -hmm. I think the Supra is a faster car. And it's certainly, when you smash third gear, it certainly feels faster. Oh, and it is. You know, I mean, Toyota says 382 horsepower. I bet that's at the wheels. Even if it's at the crank, it's making 65 more horsepower and a lot more torque. Right. And what does the Civic weigh? 3188. So it so is lighter. By it's a little. Pounds. It's a little lighter. Yeah. Yeah. 150 pounds, but 65 horsepower. I think covers uh, covers that in yeah. the power to weight. Plus, acceleration-wise, rear-wheel drive, you're going to get a better launch. You're yeah. going to get a better power down. Yeah. Now, the final. So, one point for the Supra, which On is speed. three to two. Three to two. But, end of video, which would you rather actually spend your own money on? The Supra was fifty-five thousand. The uh, the Civic was forty-five thousand. They both are going to be marked up to let's call it sixty. Yeah, and they are both cars that we are seeing less of. We're not seeing as many coupes. We're not seeing as many sedans. Everything's headed towards, you know, automatic crossovers. So both of them are rare, fast, and special. If I was going to spend my money, uh, I would buy the Civic Type R because it is a more usable car, and it also is still very exciting and fun to drive. Like I, I've every time I've driven that thing, I've not been wanting for a rear-wheel drive car. I'm like, this is super fun and really, really confident in the corners. I would probably also buy the Civic because the Supra is not quite special enough for me to have as a second car and not quite practical enough for me to want as an only car. Yeah. Thank you to uh, both Honda and Toyota for letting us have a go in these two cars. I think in the scoreboard, the Supra does win, it but does. in terms of which would get our money, Honda actually wins this one. But that's been a fun video. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. Like, subscribe, and do all those things. If this format is what you want and the numbers agree, we may have to change it up for good. See you guys next time. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com TST.